this this record. It, it sounds like you have a really interesting mishmash of um, mm-hmm. you know what took place, and uh, what are some of the other combinations you could think of, like say with um, Greta von, von Fleet mixing with uh, Cheap Trick, or say with um, the the Who mishmashing with uh, Stone Temple Pilots, and uh, what would you say some of the other mishmashes you could think of? I mean, I can think of some really good combinations. Uh, well, I mean, those bands have a very specific sound, you know, um, uh, you know, we have stuff that's, uh, on the record that's kind of heavier Then we have stuff that's kind of, you know, mid tempo. Um, it's hard to describe because everybody who hears the band has their own kind of opinion. You know, people have said, Oh, you know, it reminds me of breaking Benjamin which was like, oh, wow, that's very cool, because I really like that band. Uh, some people say, oh, it kind of reminds me of Disturbed a little bit, which was kind of very surprising to hear, too, because I don't think we're that heavy of a band. Um, so every song is different. You know, I hear sometimes the Metallica-isms in some of the songs, and that's, you know, from Mike, because Mike has worked with Metallica for, for you know a good part of 25 years uh-huh. um, so you know it's very guitar driven but it's it's very the, the production on it's very modern so um, you know we sound like electric radio kings that's amazing too and of course we'll get to some of your career as well too including LA Guns you listen to the Mike mm-hmm. Wagner show at the MikeWagnerShow.com powered by Sonic Web Studios visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today at 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 10% off your first order. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Also, the Mike Wagner Show can be heard on the themikewagnershow.com. You can also check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Wagner Show. You can download and listen on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, watch the interview on YouTube as well. And check out our program coming soon to TLB TV. That's the Liberty Beacon TV Network for the Mike Wagner Show. You can take um, wherever you go. And it looks like I think we might have... Um, Lost um, Stacy Blaze for just a minute. We're going to uh, try try to get him back on, and we're going to um, see if we can get him on here. So we're going to try Stacy here for a minute. And um, okay, are we back on Stacy? Yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah. I, th- I think the call dropped out for just a minute here. So we, we were just talking about um, you know uh, what's coming up as well too. And of course, you've been in LA Guns for quite some time, and uh, you can just tell us um, how you got involved and. Uh, and uh, some of the others you've uh, been into. Yeah, sure. Um, did a, a brief rundown of um, musical history, so to speak, um, not to spend too much time on it. Um, the f- first uh, national band I got into was a band from the late 80s called Rocks Gang. Uh, I joined them in 92, was in that band for eight years. Uh, they were based out of Florida, um, signed up from Records. The next band, uh, when I moved to L.A., uh, after a couple of years, uh, uh, I was um, able to uh, end up joining L.A. Guns in 2003 and was in that band for 10 years. Uh, then I had my own band called Let It Rock, which was a mixture of guys from other famous 80s metal bands. Mm-hmm. Um and then uh, for briefly uh, six months, I guess it was, I was in Bobby Blosser's version of Rat. And uh, then uh, that ended, and Paul and I formed Electric Radio Kings. So. That, that is amazing, too. And, and of course, um, you know, who just say who's been the best you've worked with so far? And, of course, you know, you know being on tour, you know, just like with, um, you know, say with Alice Cooper, White Snake, Scorpion, Cinderella, Dokken, who just say has been the best uh, that you've uh, toured with? And who would you say is the most challenging? Uh, gosh, there's so many great shows. I mean, all, all those guys are all just great, fantastic. Um, you know, uh, getting to open up for Alice Cooper and the Scorpions, uh, that was amazing, you know, to kind of meet your idols and, and just, you know, be, be, be part of an, an evening with, so to speak, and, uh, share the same, same, same stage. It's a pretty amazing thing. Um, 
we did this uh, one of the first years I was in LA guns with this really fun tour with Doc and for three, three, four months in the summer. And that was, uh, that was just a, a load of fun, you know? Um, uh, but all those bands, um, were, were great to play shows with Cinderella, great guys. And, um, yeah, you know, uh, the Skid Row guys were, were always, always really fun as well as the guys in war. So a lot of, a lot of great memories. Yeah, it does sound like it's amazing as well, too. And um, who, who are some of your biggest influences when it comes to uh, being on guitar as well and also uh, getting mm-hmm. started with it? Yeah. Um, uh, for me, it was uh, Neil Sean from Journey and uh, Randy Rhodes, uh, Ozzy Osbourne's uh, late great guitar player, um, were big influences. Um, also, Neil Giraldo uh, was a huge influence um, from Pat Benatar. Uh, I love his guitar playing still to this day. Um, and then, you know, I was also uh, into, you know, Jimmy Page and Hendrix and, and um, you know, all those guys as well. So um, I try to listen to a lot of different guitar players and not just one guy to, you know, evoke many styles. Uh, I try to learn from, you know, still to this day, I'm always looking for new guitar players I can pick something up from. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, what do you think about the new guitars today? And uh, what advice would you give to them? Just you know, own your own your uh, craft uh, and try to listen to as many different players and different styles uh, as you can uh, to become the, the best well-rounded musician. Um, it's not about for me about being a you know. Uh, a Steve Vai or a Momstein. For me, I was always wanted to be a great songwriter. You know, I wanted to be a great guitar player too, but I was always, you know, writing songs from the time I was like 12 and 13. So um, everybody's different, you know. Um, but if you can do both, be a great guitar player and a great songwriter, uh, that's an awesome thing. Yeah, it does sound amazing too. And of course, uh, on your website, stacyblades.com, you wrote and published a very revealing book called Snake Eyes in 2009. Mm-hmm. Can you just uh, tell us a little bit about that and uh, and where can they publish your uh, book? Um, that is out of print now. <laughs> um, that uh, came out, oh, Jesus, it, it came out a long time ago, 2009, I believe that, that came out. Um, and it did, did, did great. And, um, um, got great reviews and, uh, but, uh, I, you know, was sh- I think it was uh, shopping in a new book deal. So I had taken it off the market and uh, just not a priority right now. Um, and all the people that have it, it's a, it's a good read, you know? Okay. All right. That's amazing too. And of course, you know, getting back to the, uh, electric radio Kings and you just had like an interesting mix as well too. You know, just like with, um, you have roots in new Orleans, Los Angeles, Toronto. And of course, you know, you know, what's some of the other, um, you know, roots that influence you and, um, who else you think would, um, describe like the sound and everything, just, uh, how you got your roots. As far as the band goes or, or the band. Yes. The yeah. Um, well, like I said, when, when Paul and I, you know, started this, uh, we wanted to do something kind of modern, but at the same time, we wanted to, um, you know, take our favorite bands like uh, uh, Stone Temple Pilots and uh, Velvet Revolver um, and kind of infuse that with a little bit of, uh, you know, 70s uh, cheap trick and kind of explore that road. And that, that's kind of our sound. Um, it's a, it's modern, but it has a retro retro feel to it. But it's not so retro that it go, that you you know oh they sound exactly like that. So, um, but that's kind of uh, you know the, the overall sound of our, of our song styling. Um, but of course, it, it it changed a lot when Mike came into the fold. He 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 made us into this incredible band that we are. Mm-hmm. That, that, that sounds amazing also, too, like with how you guys just managed to um, come all together, too, and um, talk about an upcoming tour that you have and uh, where you'll be playing. Yeah, we are working with a few agents right now uh, to get this thing machine off the ground, uh, which has always been kind of the struggles, you know, um, to, to get a, a good agency. And it's, you know, we're, we're a new band as well, so it's it's a little bit harder uh, to book shows when, when you're a brand new band. 
um, even though we, we are starting to become a little bit successful. So uh, the first date is um, June 28th in Salt Lake City, and that's at uh, Liquid Joe's, and then uh, we're, at, we're booking more and more shows. Mm -hmm. and, and where do you think you're getting your listeners as well with all your music? Well, uh, basically a lot through the, the Midwest, and, um, you know, uh, we're doing well in a lot of different markets like Portland, Maine, Chicago, uh, you know, um, southern New York, uh, certain parts of, of Arizona, just kind of all over, uh, but mainly the mainly Midwest, and that's always been just a great market for rock. That sounds amazing, too. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you guys on tour as well, too. And, of course, you know, you know, besides your um, your project, Like a Radio Kings with Paul Christiana, what do you consider your favorite projects overall, the ones you've been involved in, and what's the most challenging? I think probably, you know, doing something new and out of uh, kind of the wheelhouse uh, is probably the most challenging with, with this new band um, since it's not – you know that sound of 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 a of you know retro 80s metal so to speak um and you know there's there's even though i did records with with rocks gang and la guns um it's a different vibe with this so it's not so far left field but it is different than the stuff i did in the albums i did with la guns and rocks gang so I think that's probably the most challenging as far as just kind of def redefining yourself. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm doing this now, you know, um, but the, my, my fans who've kind of grown up with me, so to speak, I've always been super, super supportive and, uh, of anything I do. So I've, I've been very blessed that way. That's amazing too. And, uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Mm, as far as band wise, uh, it can be a band, it can be individual, or it can be just you know anybody, or even growing up. You know, I was just blessed to be around great music, uh, having you know friends who had older brothers and sisters, um, and hopefully that's still happening in this day and age that you know um, people are turning other young kids onto music. Um, not, it's probably not what it was like at all when um you know we were younger and listening to you know journey and rolling stones and zeppelin and all the stuff that are uh you know older brothers or sisters had and their friends had and you borrow the records and that really doesn't happen anymore so I, i'm really grateful to have grown up when i did um and experienced that but there is a shift happening now with music that um you have, you know, take a band like Greta Von Fleet, who are very Zeppelin sounding and doing very, very well, becoming very successful. So it's nice to see that a young band who are 19, 20 years old are doing something in that vein and turning kids onto a whole era of that kind of sound of rock. Mm -hmm. So, um, Everything does come full circle. So it's, you know, and I've been saying this for years, it's going to be a music revolution and people are going to be tired of listening to crappy, disposable music, mm -hmm. pop, which we've been subjected to for decades. And it's, it's man, I'm ready to see a death, death nail come into it because it's just, uh, it's not good, you know, and it's, it's, it seems to be that, uh, I mean, rock's always been underground anyway, so, I mean, nothing's really <laughs> new there. But it's, <laughs> it's nice to see kind of these younger bands coming up and carrying the torch, so that's, that's great. But um, uh, hopefully that turns into, you know, the way we grew up, um, so it's promising. It, it sounds very promising, too. And what are some of the other genres you've been involved with when it comes to music or, or influences? I mean, I love blues. I, 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 you know, um, I do listen to, to um, kind of newer style of country. I do a thing on the side that I tour with called Nashville Stars Live. Okay. Um, so uh, it was cool getting to, to kind of, uh, you know, diving into to Brad Paisley and Jason Aldean's music and 
and uh, that stuff because uh, it's just very rock orientated. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not too much of a stretch. Um, so that's uh, that's been a fun experience. Uh,